which is very important for me right now, is to create legacy of performance art. So I built this institute in Hudson, and they just signed the contract with Rem Kohlhaus. And the institute is going to be only for the long duration of performance work, but not just kind of I'm doing, but also for theater, for film, for video, for dance, music, and opera. And the minimum is going to be, like in the joke, six hours on, you know, the performances. So I'm thinking to build these special chairs on the little wheels. So you sit in the chair, and after maybe 11 hours, you get tired, maybe early. So you press the button, and the wheelchair turns to the bed. There's a little blanket, and the attendant who see you sleeping, he will roll you on the ramp. And on the ramp is like you'll be parked like the cars. The all sleeping people be parked on the ramp. So they are part of the piece anyway, even if the dream, you can get it. And uh, when you wake up, you will raise your hand. The attendant will roll you back into the theater to, to continue looking the work. And uh, in the right arm is going to be cool drink. On the left arm, hot meal, little lamp to write the notes. I didn't figure out toilet yet, but generally it's like how to never leave the space. Because I really figure out that in my experience, the long durational performance art is the most transformative work of art, not just for performer doing it, but for the also audience looking at it. It's something happening there. There is some kind of exchange of energy. There is some kind of molecules that really nobody else can understand except if you're experiencing. And performance art is life form of art, is time-based art. And uh, you can't just heard about, or you just can't look in the dead material in the book or these videos. You don't get really real thing. Real thing is being there. And that's the only way you know, to experience. You know how many books are written with uh, some amazing guy experience some amazing things, and you read the book, and you, but you don't really, you think maybe change your life but didn't really change your life. You're the same all over again. The only the real thing will change your life is things you're afraid of, the things unknown, the tragedies in your own life or a life of something that affects you deeply, and real experience, that would matter. And performance is only about real experience. Thank you. Now, I still like to show you Alice Priestley, but looks like it's really not going to happen. Okay. So, I know that we have a few minutes for question and answer. So, ask me three questions. That's kind of enough. What do you think? <laughs> Can be one private, too. Anyway, my private and real life is together, so it doesn't matter. I was wondering if you could talk more about ways that you prepare yourself for performing and if that, if you have different ways for different types of performances. Oh, preparation of performance. You know, it's so interesting, like in, in my, my life is full of contradictions. First, I don't have any time. My, my life is so full of engagements and things I have to do and, you know, building infrastructures, answering hundreds of emails. So the, I, then when I create longer work of art, I'm creating longer and longer. Art is getting longer and longer as life is getting shorter and shorter. But the preparation is every time the different. I mean, the last preparation for artists is present. It took me about one year. It was quite big preparation because, first of all, of sitting motionless for such a long period of time, I have to, uh, for one entire year, not eat lunch. Because in our body, the, you know, we always taking food and body is a great instrument and always creating acids to digest, which makes you sick if you don't eat. So I have to adjust my body that will not be lunch <laughs> during this performance, so I didn't eat the lunch. Then I have to train myself how I can take water only during the night and sleep and take like every 20 minutes or 30 to have enough water for during the day. So this was another training. Then I went to India to do all this cleaning the house, purification stuff. It's actually serious big business doing this whole thing. <laughs> and then the moment I stop, I eat like a kilo of chocolate and done everything wrong. 
and that's that's human and I never I never hide my vulnerabilities to the other things love trashy movies definitely but the but then comes this moment you know it's really like a soldier attitude for the for the cause you have the idea and no matter what you have to deliver and my preparation depends every time different but basically is is a lot of physical work next if you're a little further back if you'd come forward I'm In describing your inspiration of becoming a forming artist, you mentioned the military aircraft, and also in describing your preparation of becoming a performance artist, you talked about uh, living in a remote area, in a cabin, and there were these military aspects that made me think of something I had read recently in Social Inquiry, a journal out of the University of Chicago that Robert Morris wrote. Um, he said that he thought all performance was oppressive. It was? Was oppressive. And I just am wondering, um, does that resonate with you? Because it sounds like the opposite of what you initially said. Do, I, like, do I look op oppressive to you? <laughs> I love, performance is the most wonderful thing I ever discovered. It's a pity that he's dead, otherwise maybe I could convince him differently. <laughs> but you know, military aspect is very much to do with my uh, upbringing. It's because you know, my, as I said, you know, I was, my mother and father being both uh, partisan soldiers, national heroes, it's a, it's a hard task, you know. My mother would wake me up in the night if my bed was not straight, because I sleep messy, if you know how much how insane is that? And uh, I was 20, I, I've made the early performances age, till age 29 in Belgrade, and I have to be 10 o'clock at home. And uh, I, when I was 29, I escaped home. She went to the, mili to the police to say that I escaped. Then she gave a description how I was dressed and so on. I said, but what's her age? The guys, as she said, 29. And the guys say, you know, we have more important things to do. Can you go home? <laughs> it's about time. So, you know, this is my background. <laughs> And, uh, and all this, I think, is extremely discipline is something that is so important if you're a performance artist. Discipline is one of the m basic thing, you know, and, you know, military, not military. I love uniforms anyway, because it's like really, I just done these silent parties when everybody wear lab coats, because I really like this kind of um, discipline that needs to be to be ex 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 executed if you want to do something. How you can possibly perform three months if you don't have discipline? There's no way <laughs> you will give up. Is the, the answer your question or not? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. We're approaching the third question. Let's see. I feel honored, thank you. Um, I was struck by something you said that um, you're opposed to technology and I wondered for someone who works with the body and art how you think about new ways that technology and the body are interrelated for instance through medical technology. Very happy with the question so I really can put all my hate into it. <laughs> Talking about technology, just just few, few uh, I'm reading the book called 2312 and Kim Stanley Robinson the, is a the American science fiction writer. He called me and he said to me, he sent me this book. And I said, why well, I should write? Because she's, he said to me, but for you are one of the characters in the book on the name Abramovich. And I said, oh my God, I want to read this. Now I'm still reading this huge book. So what I'm doing in your book, he said, oh, nothing special. You are actually performing on the asteroid and the Mercury. And I said, I said but in, he said to me, your work is so immaterial that he really could take galactic trips, so I could go into any galactic uh, traveling science fiction book, which is really was interesting to me, talking about technology. But you know, 
I, it's just about idea how technology took our time. Technology was invented, the human being have time, and look what's happening. I mean, if you remember great days that you write the letter, you make a little walk, you spend, you put, the, maybe it's not even, it was not born then. But anyway, <laughs> then you go to the post office, you take your dog on the walk, you put a stamp, and you really done good work. You come back, and tender days, nothing's happening. And then arrive the back the letter, and then you wait another 10 days. And this is the problem, you know, the technology, we completely replace all our, our, our inside with the technology. I mean, do we use telepathy? We don't, because we use telephone. Telepathy is so much accurate, it really works, only take four years to learn. And, uh, and you know, and, and so many different things. This is the, the whole problem with, 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 uh, with us, how we, we are disconnected. We are living in disconnected society and we are disconnected for our, from ourselves. And we don't have any, any, any moment of concentration. You know, 13 seconds of Coca-Cola advertising, this is the limit. And then you, you know, you're doing zipping through the programs of television. Nobody's looking anything anymore. And this is all, you know, relating to the, our incredible restlessness and unhappiness and unsatisfaction. And, uh, you know, nature is a big teacher. You know, I, when somebody asks me, you know, to, who I'm influenced with, which artist, and I see, I, well, I should be influenced by an artist uh, is being influenced by second-hand somebody because he's also influenced by somebody else. The, really what I'm influenced is that is the, I call the places of power, is waterfalls, you know, the volcanoes, oceans, the forest, the, just, you know, hugging the tree. It's a good thing to do these days. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.